Nick, you invest here globally. Uh, you've done it for a long time. You're looking for trends. I'll, I'll put the same question to you. What's the big trend that's going to affect it, especially an investor as opposed to the general look, public? Look, personally, I think Daniel's just summed it up perfectly and, and to a certain extent stole my thunder, so I'll just oh, move sorry. on to the next bit. <laughs> and, and look, I agree with your sentiments entirely. I mean, we've been looking at this stuff for 10 years and, and I think I'm... Um, Judging by the response, I think everyone's across the platform place. You know, Google, Amazon, Facebook, you need to understand that the network effects around these companies mean that they can continue to grow. And, and this makes them different from every other business on the planet. A digital business gets bigger as it gets bigger and, and, and doesn't run into size effects. And so Google had its results the other day. It just did its 27th quarter in a row of plus 20% rov revenue. So the law of large numbers doesn't affect it. And it's exactly what Daniel said, all these other things slowly come in. So if you're Amazon, for instance, you're a shopping platform, mm. then you're a shopping platform with artificial intelligence, then you put voice on top, mm. then as Hamish pointed out, you put your own products on top, and on and on it goes. So moving the conversation on, obviously digital's the future. I think Hamish summed it up, and I agree, <laughs> slightly late, but I'm glad you said it, not me. <laughs> um, I think Daniel's right that this is gonna profoundly change your world. And look, from our point of view, we spend time trying to work out how to make money out of this. And to bring it down to just making money out of it, we know artificial intelligence is going to be big. I won't repeat that. Um, the reality is and it's an arms race. This is an arms race to see who gets there first. And so in most arms race I look at, it's either a fulfillment arms race, a data arms race, or a computing arms race. And in any arms race, you like to own the weapons manufacturers. So from our point of view, semiconductors is a great place to look at the moment. Uh, semiconductor companies are essentially the new resources to a certain extent. Uh, we remember the super cycle in resources. There will be a super cycle in semiconductors. And only because you have an industry that's essentially was one day just computers and then computers and smartphones, and now it's computers and smartphones and cars and factories mm. and hyperscale data centers, et cetera. And so to sum this up really quickly, some of you would have had some artificial intelligence interaction already. Mm. Your phone will tell you how long it's going <coughs> to take you to get home. Your Facebook feed, feed tells you that you don't like Donald Trump and everyone else doesn't like Donald Trump. But somewhere in the world, someone's got a feed saying Donald Trump's a great guy. Uh, that's a Facebook feed essentially doing artificial intelligence. And it has to do that with speed and semiconductors. <laughs> so from our point of view, just extending the conversation, because I think Daniel summed it up so well. Ultimately, it's a war. There are other investments apart from the big platforms. We love the big platforms. Clearly, semiconductors is one of them. And the other big one is data. Um, the guy who wins here is the guy who has the most data and has the most compute. And so from our point of view, we, as, as, as looking at big trends, are looking at companies that have data, that have data as a service.